Hello everybody. So I have been reporting on developments in Gaza, but uh, there are other big stories also happening around the world. One which I am kind of guilty of uh, ignoring is the general elections in India, the country of my birth. Um, general elections in India is a huge affair. I mean, we are talking about 968 million people eligible to vote 968 million which is 16 times more than the total population of united kingdom that's how big it is and the country just had their general elections concluded on saturday saturday was the seventh and the last phase of the elections yes india usually does elections in several phases and by the way this election particularly lasted for 50 days yes 50 days so the first phase of election took place on the 19th of april and the last of the seven phase election took place on saturday which is yesterday narendra modi who has been the prime minister since 2014 is seeking a record third term for himself and his party the bjp bjp is a hindutva party which believes in a divisive ideology um, it has often pushed anti-muslim rhetoric to win elections and this election was no different narendra modi was seen using the islamophobia islamophobic trope to polarize hindus और पहले जब उनकी सरकार थी उन्होंने कहा था कि देश की संपत्ति पर पहला अधिकार मुसलमानों का है इसका मतलब ये संपत्ति इकट्ठी करके किसको बांटेंगे जिनके ज्यादा बच्चे हैं उनको बांटेंगे घुसपैठियों को बांटेंगे क्या आपकी मेहनत की कमाई का पैसा घुसपैठियों को दिया जाएगा आपको मंजूर है ये ये कांग्रेस का मैनिफेस्टो कह रहा है कि वो माताओं बहनों का सोने का हिसाब करेंगे उसकी जड़ती करेंगे जानकारी लेंगे और फिर उस संपत्ति को बांट देंगे और उनको बांटेंगे जिनको मनमोहन सिंह जी की सरकार ने कहा था कि संपत्ति पर पहला अधिकार मुसलमानों का है सीकिंग वोट्स बाई इन वोकिंग रिलीजन इज not allowed under indian laws but the election commission of india which is expected to be an impartial body is no longer impartial and that credit goes to narendra modi so there was a tradition of electing the chief election commissioner chief election commissioner through a committee consisting of the prime minister leader of the opposition and chief justice of the Indian Supreme Court. Now, what Modi did recently, just before the election, he passed a law because he has a majority in the parliament. He passed a law changing the rule. And now the new committee has himself, the leader of the opposition, and a member of his cabinet. So clearly, now he has two is to one majority in deciding the name of his favorite chief election commissioner. Now, if you look at Modi's career his political career has often been marred by islamophobia in 2002 when he was the chief minister of gujarat there was a deadly riot a riot that killed more than 4000 people majority of them muslims so there is nothing new about modi and islamophobia just to put it in the local context modi is uh, maybe 10 Swala Bravaman and Priti Patel and, uh, and Rishi Sunak combined together or even worse. Now challenging him is Rahul Gandhi of the Congress party and the front that he is leading, he is leading a front of various non-BJP parties which is under an alliance called India, Indian National Developmental Inclusive Alliance. Now, it remains to be seen whether India Alliance would be able to dislodge Modi from the power. But yesterday was the day when the exit polls were announced. Every single exit poll 
prediction matched the desired number of seats by Modi. Now, if you don't know, just before the elections, this time Modi said that his party will win more than 400 seats in the 543 seat parliament. Now, that was quite an audacious expectation because Modi was fighting 10 years of anti incumbency, a tenure that has seen price rise going through the roof, and unemployment skyrocketing. And there have been lots of policy failures under his rule. And yet he claimed that his party would set a new record by winning for more than 400 seats. The last time a prime minister won more than 400 seats was Rahul Gandhi's father, Rajiv Gandhi, in 1984, when he became the prime minister immediately after the assassination of his mother, Indira Gandhi. So riding on the sympathy of his mother's assassination, he went on to win more than 400 seats. So this time when Modi said that I am going to win more, more than 400 seats, it became a laughing stock. But then if you look at the exit poll predictions, normally every single exit poll in India is uh, uh, looked at with suspicion and people think that they are highly compromised, that they only project the numbers given by the ruling party, which is the BJP in this case. So since Modi had desired to win more than 400 seats, every single exit poll is now predicting that Modi and his alliance will be uh, winning close to 400 seats. That's how compromised the Indian setup is. Many a times I have said that in the past when I was in India, that Indian electoral system needs serious reforms. There are three serious reforms that Indian election system needs. if the opposition parties have any fair chance of winning it. And they are that one phase elections. It doesn't make sense for a country of India size to go for seven phase elections. There is absolutely no way India cannot hold elections in one phase because the moment you spread the elections over 50 days, the chances of rigging or corruption increase that much. So one phase election, India uses machines or software based machines to conduct voting. That's called EVM, electronic voting machine. Now, these are run by softwares. Now, if you use that, those machines, uh, the areas that went for voting on the 19th of April, the fate of those machines would not be known for the next 50 days. Now, India is one of those countries where corruption is rife. It's not that difficult to pay somebody a little amount of money and get those machines rigged. It's absolutely possible. India is one of the very, very few countries in the world which don't use ballot papers. So these are the two things that India need. And the third thing is the day you have elections, you know, the counting should be on the same day. So using ballot paper, single phase elections and counting on the same day as voting. But none of these things are happening in India. So therefore, now the counting would be on the 4th of June. The last phase of election took place yesterday on Saturday on the 1st of June, as the counting would be taking place on the 4th of June. And don't be surprised if Modi actually goes on to win 400 seats. I mean, this will be astonishing. Although, the opposition party are claiming that they will get the majority and the number they are predicting for themselves is 295. India Gatbandan kam se kam 255 seats plus 255 se jyada aayenge kam to nahi aayenge ye humne aakalan kiya ki sabhi hamare netaon se now we will see on the 4th of June whose predictions come true or who is better at managing India's general elections. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, please do so because that's one of the many ways you can support independent journalism. God bless you all.